Yo, yo, can you hear me? Hey, everybody. Sorry, I'm a little late. I'll give it a couple of minutes. I, I know we're starting a little late. And yeah, like I said, this is probably going to be the last um, earnings lecture for, for this quarter. It's just pretty much done. This is like the last of it until next quarter, which is going to happen pretty soon. Right? That's, that's the weird thing, the way earnings are going this year. They just keep getting pushed out more and more, and then you just have these crazy long earning cycles. But thank you guys for stopping by. And like always, we usually run through these pretty quickly, so you guys won't be here for long. I'm going to give it one more minute, guys, and we'll get started. And then just confirming, can you guys hear me? I just want to put something in the chat just so I can know you guys can hear me. And then you guys can see the the slideshow. Uh, it's the last time I didn't know you guys can see the slideshow, so I just want to make sure you guys can see it. If someone can put something in the chat, that'd be awesome. Nando's here. Cool. Thank you, Jenna. All right, guys, we'll get started. This is going to be a fairly quick one. There really wasn't a lot of, of crazy earnings coming up into this week. Like I said, this is going to be the last of it. The ones we're going to really kind of go over today was Oracle. They obviously reported as well. And I'm going to go over three of last week's. If you guys look at the earnings this week, they're they're very retail heavy, and we're still getting a lot of that SaaS in there as well. With um, where do they go? Uh, with Sentinel One, um, and a couple other ones that you're going to see in here, but mainly focus on retail uh, for for this week specifically. And like I said, this is probably going to be the last one for for the rest of the quarter. So these are the ones we're going to be looking at. So we're going to be looking at Oracle, Kohl's, Dollar Tree, Sentinel One. Sticks, uh, that's Stick Sporting Goods, um, Adobe, and Ulta. Let me change this to seven. Obviously, at the risk, like you guys just be careful, right? With earnings, you know how crazy they can be, specifically with guidance and the numbers that actually come out, right? So let's get into the recap. And I'm going to jump a little bit. We're going to go straight into Oracle, um, but we're also going to jump into Neo. And I'm also going to be showing you guys DocuSign and Ross. I think those are just a great variety from last week that did a really great job when it came to earnings, um, just to give you guys a wide variety of, of perspectives. Um, Oracle's, Oracle's currently trading at 114. And this is actually one of the ones that surprised me. Personally, Oracle to me has been a dying SaaS company for the past couple of years. Um, I actually know people who work at Oracle directly. And they literally sold all of their offices in the Bay Area. Everyone works completely remote. Um, so they're getting rid of a lot of unnecessary costs, which is probably one of the reasons why they've been increasing um, in revenue. So this was a huge surprise for me. Um, the expected was 138 EPS. They reported 1.41 and they barely missed revenue. So nothing, nothing crazy, right? But for me, Oracle as a service just isn't really cutting it when it comes to all the new tech that's been coming out, especially even in tech now, especially with me being in tech, Oracle is known as a legacy company, right? It's known as a legacy service, um, but it looks like they're starting to pivot a little bit more. Um, I think they're going to start maybe focusing more on AI and a lot of the services that they're providing for these AI companies. So maybe that's where you're going to see a lot of this if Oracle does pivot correctly and starts targeting AI companies and starts helping them, I can see them coming back to life overall, right? So the cloud and service and license support, they saw a 12% increase in revenue, but this was the big one, right? The CEO said that the company is committed to hitting previously stated goals of 65 billion in sales by physical 2026. Now, obviously, I don't know how the hell they're going to get to 65 billion um, by next or in the next two years, depending on when the physical year, depending on how they run certain things. But seeing this positive guidance from the CEO 
is always a good perspective, especially for long-term investments, right? When it comes to Oracle. Um, so you're actually going to see probably Oracle start balancing up, obviously, depending on news and how things are going, right? But this is what I was telling, right? The company attributed to rise strong in demand for its artificial intelligence servers. So Oracle's probably main competitor is going to be AWS. So that's going to be Amazon's um, online cloud servers, but it looks like they're getting a lot more bigger deals in the line and they're doing a lot of stuff for Microsoft. They're building data centers for Microsoft and Azure. So if they continue this route, I could see Oracle bouncing back. Not one personally that I'm going to be trading anytime soon. I just don't trust Oracle's team in general and what they're doing. I think I need to see resilience, not just for maybe one quarter, but for a couple quarters for me to invest in this in, in a long-term perspective, right? So let's jump into Neo. This is another one that um, ex you know that surprised me. Now Neo being a China-based EV company, obviously the EV environment as a whole has just been changing dramatically. We see what's happening with Tesla. We see what's happening uh, with Lucid, with Rivian. The market as a whole, we see what happened with Ford, right? They're discontinuing the production for their F-150s. A lot of these legacy car makers are realizing, hey, there's not as much money as we thought that there wasn't EVs. And this is a very conflicting thing, especially with investors. But if you actually like take a step back and understand that Neo is still a very, very young company. And when you look at very young companies, if you look at startups, if we're looking at this from a lens of, of a investor and not necessarily a trader, right? Again, we're looking at these things from investment perspective, not necessarily a trading perspective. EPS does not matter when it comes to startups. What they care about is revenue. And you'd be surprised, look how much revenue that they're actually making, especially from Neo. And look at the numbers that they actually deliver. They delivered 50,000 vehicles in the fourth quarter, 25% year over year, 33,000 SUVs, 16,000 sedans. So if, if you look at this again as, as an investor, you're like, wow, these guys are actually producing a, a big amount of numbers. Um, so this is, this is going to be just a, a positive look from an investor's perspective. Um, again, revenues generated from vehicle sales, 2.17 billion, up 1.6 year over year. And that's exactly, again, what investors want to see on the long term. Neo, from a chart perspective, obviously it's a, it's a damn near all time low. It's like at $6 at the moment. This is, might be one of those ones where you just have to be careful. And from a long term perspective, it might just be like buy a couple shares. I wouldn't even buy, um, leaps or, or or calls with this is just so cheap and if, if we actually take a look at this let's take a look at this on a chart perspective right i rarely do this but if we if we look at this on a chart perspective it's just been holding that five to six dollar range for a while um and it's just one of those things where if it does receive any amount of good news um specifically from now to the next time it's earnings we have a great shot of this actually jumping up, right? So this might be one of those ones where you just uh, set and forget um, um, or maybe DCA into it little by little. Obviously, having that uh, risk to reward, if it breaks that $5, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll jump out. I lose a, a couple bucks. But I think the upside potential on NEO at the moment as a long-term investment is definitely there. And besides, if you guys ever have any questions or, or comments about any of these companies, please let me know. But I think Neo is just one of those ones. I've always really liked Neo. If you actually look at their cars, they're pretty cool. But overall, the EV market's just been a little flimsy. Um, so that's why I like it. Just R and R overall is is pretty good. Ross, Ross is one of my favorite favorite companies. I used to trade this a lot back in the COVID era, back when it was a lot cheaper. Um, Ross is just one of those ones where it really respects your support and resistance line. So from a charting perspective, you can actually use this on a very well thing. Um, but when it comes to a fundamental perspective, Ross is just a very, very profitable company. Currently trading now at 145. Back in October, it was trading about, I think half of that. Um, we, you could have bought this at 110, maybe 109, even in the 90s. Um, so it's just been, it's been a great company overall. EPS has been at 182. Last quarter they reported, 133. And look at this. In one quarter, damn near made over a billion dollars in revenue. Right? And I, I, this is why I love showing you guys these types of companies because they're not famous. They're not sexy. You're not going to be seeing them all over 
Yahoo Finance or or any of these investment companies. But these are just the ones, the companies that have just been consistently profitable year over year, quarter over quarter. So this actually gave us an, almost a 12% surprise on earnings. But again, beautiful, beautiful guidance from the CEO. They're very pleased with their fourth quarter sales and earnings result that were well ahead of our expectations. So the CEO didn't even know that they were going to be this good. Our above plan sales were driven by customers' positive response to our improved assortments of Bali branded bargains throughout our stores. People don't know, Ross is essentially a company that received goods from companies that um, you know need to free up shelving space. So if you ever go to Ross, I, I actually like going to Ross. I like buying stuff from there. <laughs> you can get some really cheap, really good quality stuff there. And then the board of directors, and I think this is the other big one that you're going to see. Give me one second, just drink some water. So last for the past two years, they did a $1.9 billion share buyback, right? So they did that. Now, the company board of directors, they approved a new 2.1 billion stock repurchase authorization for physical year 24 and 25. So this is, again, just beautiful, beautiful, great guidance um, on Ross for the long term. Again, for price, I, I think this is definitely one of those ones. I wouldn't trade shares on the. I, mean, I wouldn't trade options on this. So the the just the OI in general, and the spreads on these are are really bad. But if you have shares, if you have the money, this might be one of those ones where you slowly DCA into it, because I think Ross still has a lot to go. I think is a very undervalued company for the price that it was at, like even at the 110, 111 area that it used to be, that was just money for me all the time. And we're going to get into DocuSign. So DocuSign obviously being a SaaS company as well. This is being 5798. This was also a surprise one to me. Personally, again, kind of like Oracle, although DocuSign is on the newer side of things, it's just been a dying company overall because everyone already has DocuSign. Like there's not really a lot of new customers that are diving into DocuSign as a company and that are buying their services. Um, so, but if you if you actually look at the numbers, again, if we, if we break down numbers, and this is why numbers are so important, the stock jumped 4.5% since the company released better than expected results. Again, still increasing in revenue, although DocuSign has been around for a while now, it's still almost considered like as a startup in a way and as long as it's being profitable, as long as it's showing revenue or an increase in revenue, that's all investors really care about at the end of the day. Subscription revenue, subscription revenue totaled seven twelve million. That's eight point. That's eight percent year over year. Again, as long as investors see any type of growth year over year, that's going to be uh, fantastic for them, right? And they also gave pretty good guidance on their twenty twenty five subscription revenues, expecting anywhere from six eighty six to six ninety. Um, and that's million, of course. Uh, and then they previously were at 679 uh, to 683 million, right? So doggy sign, again, not one of those ones that I'm really going to be trading. Just thought I would look at it. I think the whole SaaS world as a whole, I think we saw it with Datadog. I think we've seen it right now with Snow. We're seeing it with a lot of these companies that, in my opinion, were overvalued, right? It's a shame I was, I was, I had a incident last two weeks ago when when there was a bunch of SaaS companies reporting. Uh, we but then we see companies like Okta, and obviously I'm a little biased in that, but that are being that are just undervalued. And I think I'm going to show you one today that is a little undervalued in my opinion, um, based on what they're capable of. And I think is going to be a, another great long term hold. So I'm excited to talk about that in a second. So those are all ones that have previously reported already, guys. Now let's get into new stuff. So Coles. Ticker KSS, it's currently trading at 27.19. Kohl's is just one of those outdated legacy retailers. I think it's it's little by little. It's just going to eventually go bankrupt as well. Um, EPS at 1.29 and, and the last quarter was 0. 0.54 and, and revenue is 3.84 and they're expecting 5.77 billion. So the, there is this huge increase in revenue. Um, but if you look at this, right, and this is what scares me the most obviously we see what's happening with macy's uh, we see what's happening with nordstrom's they're closing down the stores across the country macy's revenues decreased 2.4 percent year on the year um nordstrom's reported revenues up 
three percent on the year. So there's just been this overall undecided of where things on on retail are going to go in the long term, right? Uh, Macy's has been trading down one point five percent, and Nordstrom was down ten percent. Um, I think eventually what's going to happen, especially with these old brick and mortar stores, they're just going to go completely online. I think if, um, recently Macy's just announced their their five story San Francisco that used to be like one of their big uh, flagship stores is going to be closed down as well. Nordstrom closed down there as well. And they're just closing stores down um, literally across the country. Right. So this is the other part though. So gross margin and expense control has been better. So I think as these companies close down more stores, as they lay off people, as they get rid of all of these expenses, but continue to have that revenue come in, I could see why they're going to have an increase in EPS and an increase in revenue. And as tax rates are starting to get better and better, more and more people are eventually going to start shopping, right? So um, Kohl's is just one of those ones to maybe keep an eye out. Uh, again, not one of the most sexiest names. Uh, I'm not going to be personally trading it. Just wanted to show it to you guys. Dollar Tree. I think this one is really exciting. Dollar Tree has always been a sleeper to me. I love Dollar Tree. I think everyone here has probably shopped at a Dollar Tree or Dollar General or some type of dollar store. Dollar Tree is always exploding in times of uncertainty, especially economic uncertainty. Um, and you're going to see that across the board here, especially when I actually show you guys the numbers. So let's get into it. So 2.65 EPS compared to last quarter that they actually reported a 0.97. Their actual revenue 7.31 billion and 8.65 billion is what they're going to be expecting um, this year. So recently what they've been teaming up with is actually Instacart. So they're having a lot of, while they don't have direct um, online services, they've been teaming up with a lot of these third parties so that they've been having all of these increases um, in sales as well. They've been putting in a lot of new products, specifically frozen foods. Um, that's been like a big push of theirs to, to push frozen food to prepared meals. Um, as less and less people are actually eating out due to saving money, um, they've been looking at Dollar Tree in order to do that. And that's been overall just an increase. Um, cash from operations is $2.31 billion. That's 167% higher than the industry average of $88.6 million. And overall, I think just Dollar Tree is going to continue. If, if you actually look at the chart as well, Dollar Tree has been having a fantastic year. Sentinel-1. So this is the one I'm actually pretty excited about. Sentinel-1 is a sleeper of a company as well. This is an AI-based security company. Um, so they're currently trading at $26.97. Their lows, I believe, were all the way down to like $11. Um, this is a fairly young SaaS company, but they're taking the industry by storm. Um, they've been expanding heavily and opening offices all across the world. So EPS minus 0 0.04. Last quarter, they're at minus 0 0.03. But if you actually look at revenue year over year, quarter over quarter for these past quarters, they've been profitable every single quarter. This strongly reminds me of like what Okta has been doing, where while they were a very undervalued company, I think long term, this is just going to be one of those ones that ends up exploding and taking over the market as long as their revenue continues to be consistent, right? So Sentinel-1 offers artificial intelligence, obviously a big buzzword that everyone likes to see. Um, but if look at this revenue in the third quarter of physical 2024 increased an impressive 42% year over year to 164 million. Sentinel one expects to finish physical 2024 with 616 million in revenue, which would be a 46% gain over the physical years of 2023. Um, this part right here, they really, they just recently introduced a new AI system as well. Um, so overall, I am very bullish on Sentinel One. Again, one of those ones where I would just DCA into it and kind of just hold. You you'll see the levels if you actually look at the chart. You'll see exactly where to trade this. Um, so I'm excited to 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 move into it for for earnings. All right, let's keep going, guys. All right, Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, don't know why this is here. There should be. Uh, yeah, this is correct, though. They are currently trading at $180. That was a, a surprise to me. I didn't know Dix was that expensive. Um, but if you actually look at them from October 
to now, they have doubled in stock price um, in literally less than six months. They have been just straight vertical. The, the, the chart's just been going insane. Uh, and they have the numbers to prove it. EPS going from 336. Last quarter, they were at 285. Revenue was 379 billion. Um, and last one was $304 billion. So they're expected to deliver a year over year increase in earnings and higher revenues. Revenues are expected to be at 3.75 billion, up 4.2% 4, 4 from year or ago on the quarter. And over the last four quarters, the company has been in consensus EPS estimate three times. Overall, obviously retail companies have been kind of been hurting because of the macroeconomic environment that we've been seeing. Um, but Dix has been kind of surpassing that and just been pushing forward overall. So another one that's going to be really interesting to see how they take on um, earnings. Adobe. Um, Adobe has just been a huge, huge SaaS company, if you think about it at the end of the day, trading at $560. I know this is going to be one of the more expensive ones. And I know a couple of you guys have been asking about Adobe overall. Um, when you actually look at the numbers, last quarter they reported 4.27 EPS. Um, but this year or this quarter, they're expecting 4.38 on EPS revenue, 5.5, 5.15 billion with a previous revenue of 505 billion. Um, Adobe projects total revenues between 4.35 and 4.4 billion and momentum across digital media and the digital media experience segments have probably been the main increase of growth across Adobe. If you really think about it, a lot of companies now, even whether they're small or big, have had to become social media or just multimedia companies within their own realm, right? None of these companies are surviving without social media, without having some type of media presence in the world, right? And I see this is why Adobe has just been exploding. Um, they did an acquisition as well, which is Frame.io, and that's going to have a huge accelerated growth within the creative revenues in the quarter. And then overall, we've just been seeing a growing Adobe experience cloud subscriptions so as long as Adobe continues to see an increase in subscriptions and increase in revenue, I could see uh, Adobe continuing to smash past the 500 and going into the 600 mark. And lastly, Ulta, guys. I know, like I said, we've been going through these very quickly. There wasn't really that many, so I figured we'd go through them fast. Ulta, another crazy company, um, trading again at $548.56. From a fundamental perspective, EPS wise, they're expecting a 7.53 EPS. Last quarter, they were at 5.07. Revenue, $2.49 billion last quarter. And this quarter, they're expecting a $3.52 billion in revenue. Um, you, as you can see across the board, even if you look at Costco, Target, um, all of these retail companies have been doing actually really well although inflation has been at all-time high, all, all, although these rates have been all-time high. So as we continue to, I would say, lower inflation, as we continue to lower rates, it, it's a direct correlation to why these retail companies are going to be doing, right? So um, revenues are expected to be $3.52 billion, up 9% from year ago in the quarter. Over the last four quarters, the company has been in consensus EPS estimates four times. My only concern, though, is if you actually look at Ulta. Oh, it's currently at all time highs. That is my only concern with this stock. Uh, besides that, everything else is pointing again, kind of just like Adobe. Where it still has room to go up. Ulta, again, being all time highs is my only concern. Um, but that's that's really it, guys, for this this earnings. Like I said, this is probably going to be the last one. There's just not really any more earnings left. If there was any in particular you guys wanted me to go look over, I'd be more than happy to. Um, if not, I'll give you guys back uh, 30 minutes every time, and I'll, and I'll catch you guys for the rest of the week. Don't forget, tomorrow we do have CPI. Um, so if we, if we go into the news, we go into, where is it? Um, so this is what we have for tomorrow. So we have OPEC, we have CPI. Um, so just be careful that we also have a 10 year note auction. So there is going to be a lot of volatility into tomorrow. Um, so just be careful. We also have OPEC in the morning as well. So yeah, 
thank you guys. Not sure if, if there's anything else. If, if not, have a great rest of your afternoon. Why did Costco drop so much? You know, I wanted, I wanted to look into that. Do you want to look into, we can just look into that right now. Let's look at earnings. Actually, CNBC does a really good job. Okay, so e-commerce is doing well. What caused it to go down? Ah, revenue. That's probably why. So revenue did not hit their expectations. And that's probably what caused, I mean, it didn't really go down that much, but yeah, um, that could be one of the main reasons why, or let's see if they have any negative guidance. Let me see if I were to set on the company's earnings calls. So this is what like I do. I literally go into these. I'll go into the earnings reports and like I start looking at these numbers. I start looking at guidance. I start looking at their 10Ks, their 10Qs. Mm. You think you think it's the ridiculous return rate, uh, return thing? I don't know if it's that. If th there's nothing that screams like, hey, this is why. I mean, they launched Apple Pay. That's kind of cool. This should be profitable, even though like it might not look good. If if membership signups, it's cracking down on membership sharing, it should go up. Yeah, there, there's nothing crazy um, that says. The only thing I can think of is um, is the 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 miss on the revenue, Cecilia or iPhone, whoever asked that question. That's the only thing I can think of because Target did fantastic. Um, Target destroyed earnings. So if if you look at Target's earnings. They did really, really well, right? They had a surprise. They had a twenty three percent surprise, but they did beat their uh, revenue target. So that those are like the the key differences. Again, retail investors are not, or retail traders are not moving these companies. You're you're talking about big, big, giant corporations that are putting millions and billions of dollars into these trades that are causing these huge motions, right? So, where is Costco at? Cost. So it dropped from 780 to 714. Yeah, I don't think that. It's just going to, it has to find a, a footing. It's probably going to go down to 700, to be honest with you. Because, I mean, it's chilling at the 714 level. I wouldn't be surprised just from a psychological perspective if we see 700. It's kind of what happened with Google and not from an earnings perspective, but if you like, if you look at Google, um, it touched that 130 and it literally, as soon as it touched the 130, boom, it just bounced up, right? So psychological numbers are a very real thing when it comes to trading. So with Costco, keep an eye on that, keep an eye on the 700 number. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if we touch that just from a psychological perspective. Um, but I think that's it for me, guys. Um, there's not, like I said, there's not really a lot of, of earnings left to discuss. Thank you guys for stopping by and I'll, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Again, be careful, CPI, OPEC. We have a lot of, a lot of news tomorrow. It's going to be very volatile. Um, so just wait till that release and then react to the market instead of trying to predict it, guys. Catch you later.